Assalamu alaikum everyone. I had the opportunity to visit Malaysia and because of my amazing friend Amir, I was able to visit many mosques in Malaysia. One of my favorite one is the Pink Mosque. It's in a city called Putrajaya in Malaysia, south of Kuala Lumpur. Nearby is the immense green dome Perdana Putra which contains the Prime Minister's office complex. It's known for its late 20th century architecture including the Putra Mosque made from rose-colored granite with a pink dome. Hey guys, Assalamu Alaikum. So I'm in, where am I? Putra Jaya. Yeah. Putra. <laughs> um, Putra Jaya. Yeah. And that is the government building but that is the most beautiful mosque. One of the most beautiful mosques. One of the most. Yes, because Malaysia is filled with all these beautiful mosques. I'm so in love. If I can do another teaching program, Malaysia. <laughs> the Putra Mosque is arguably Putrajaya's most distinctive landmark and one of the most modern mosques in the world. A showcase of how mosque designs have evolved in Malaysia, Putra Mosque's Islamic architecture artistically blends traditional designs, local craftsmanship, and the use of indigenous materials. The mosque is modeled after Persian Islamic architecture of the Safavid period with elements derived from other Muslim cultures, incorporating Malaysian, Persian, and Arab Islamic architectural designs. The main entrance to the mosque is fashioned in the likeness of public building gates in Muslim Persia. Its 116 meter minaret is influenced by the design of the Sheikh Omar Mosque in Baghdad. While the basement wall of the mosque resembles that of the King Hassan Mosque in Casablanca, Morocco. The question is why we need Putrajaya in the first place because we have to spend so much money, right? So the idea came in actually in the late 80s where the fourth Prime Minister foresee that to ease the congestion in Kuala Lumpur because most of the government offices are situated in the Kuala Lumpur town, right? Mm. So one of the way is to take out all the government agency and put them in one place, mm. right? So that the people can, who wants to deal with the government people only come to one place. They do not have to go to so many places. Mm -hmm. right? 
so we the government bought 5000 hectare of the land mm. okay. and then why they choose this place is because near to the airport and also mm. close to the north and south highway so they bought 5000 hectare of the land and then they have identified what are the government office that needs to be here so in 1995 they uh, they established a consortium called Putrajaya Holdings Mm. Right. So Putrajaya Holdings will be responsible for all the construction that needs to be done here to fill up the 5,000 hectare of the land. Right. So the first two buildings that was built in Putrajaya in 1997. So meaning that the birth of Putrajaya is in 1997. Mm. Right. So in June 1997, construction started for two buildings, the Prime Minister office on top of the hill and this mosque. Same contractor came, right? See, it, it was in the niche. So this is called a niche. Small one here. This is a big niche or the mehrab, lah. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then where there is a lamb and the lamb is the glass. Look, there is a lamb here with a glass inside here, right? Mm -hmm. And then it says here uh, where the glass as if it was a brilliant star. You can see the glass as if it was a brilliant star. So this is Noor. Right. Right. Okay. So there is a bud here. The ceiling here is very low. No ventilation, no window. So panas. So that's why we put a petition over there for the woman to pray the other side. So second level. Third level will be office or uh, library. 11,000 titles of book. Big library, auditorium, lecture hall. Evolution area and a mortuary. Mm -hmm. So at the basement will be the aircon system. Oh, okay. So you can see how the wood covering of the uh, mimbar. So this is another uh, different between this one. You see this one here? Mm -hmm. Right? This one? Mm -hmm. Adam from Earth. If is from Adam's left ribs, right? Yeah. Uh, this is ribs. Wow. This one. Okay. And this mosque design is quite close to the mosque in Medina, the Prophet Mosque, where the door here is the Prophet House. Mm. Right? And then from the, the pillar over here, you can put until the pillar over there is the Rauda. Mm. Right? The, the Prophet's house. house. And uh, outside is the mosque. Uh, mm. They design quite similar. So this door here it acts as the prophet house. Mm -hmm. So every design have its own meaning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very detailed. Okay. And look at the, the beautiful pulpit here. Uh, there is a mosque in Toronto, right? Yes, many. There's many Muslims in Canada. Can I come? Can you see the pulpit here? Uh, how this is a very hard wood that they used to make uh, houses and the ship boats, right? You can see the flowers are all identical design. So this guy is doing it by hand. Hammer, chisel and patience. Handcraft. Right? Handcraft. Right? You can see the sunflower over here and everything. And they do not use any nail actually. They use interlocking system of the wood. But when they want to ship this to Putrajaya, it shakes so much on the truck. So they have to dismantle and later they have to use this racket to lock it back. Uh, you can see the geometrical design. Over here, you can see the dramatical design over here. Mm. You can see the drill mark over here and how they use the chisel to do it. Right? You know why we use dramatical design? No. Right? In the perspective of Islam, if you join dramatical design, it will be no end. Correct? No end. Uh, that is how we associate Allah. No end. Mm. <laughs> right? Right? This is the amplifier room. Wow, nice. Make in Germany, Bosch. You can see the word here Menara Miss Menarat. DSU is on the wall. This is the speaker on the ceilings. Right, so they tune this one with the mixture over here. Just like recording in the studio. Oh. Mm. Right, so on Friday, a guy will sit here. To control this PC here, when the Imam perform the sermon, he will monitor the PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. The PowerPoint will come out on the TV screen. 
right? Okay. To tell us what. Afterwards, switch on this mic here. Call off the prayer from here. The sound will come from the minaret, which mm -hmm. is 160 meters high. Tower. There's a speaker on top there. The tower. Right. So they will change their roof here to become the imam and all that. Wow. Right. Uh, not for us, uh, we have to go downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> right. well, okay. Uh, special for him, right? Why is the imam special? Because sometimes he's on a rush. Yeah. So mm -hmm. he cannot go to the ablution area below, it's too far, and the mm -hmm. time is coming up. People yeah. are waiting after come up, right? So you have to rush here and take the ablution. And then go inside here and change the road. Okay. Right. Uh, not for him to pee, okay? No. The prayer hall is simple and elegant and supported by 12 columns that prop up the 36 meter diameter main dome. The mimbar and mahrab are adorned with Islamic calligraphy. A unique feature has been added to the sound system design. Front throat speakers are used to create the effect of all sounds originating from the direction of the imam. The mosque complex which can accommodate up to 10,000 worshippers can be used to hold conferences and seminars. Worshippers can also congregate at the courtyard in front of the prayer hall. The courtyard is landscaped with features and can hold an additional 5,000 people. Mosque. 